Alrighty, let's have some fun. Welcome to the final episode of our lighting mini series. Now, you guys, I know these videos haven't done super, super well in terms of numbers and views and engagement, but I personally found them super helpful and I hope you have too. And that's kind of why I've stuck with this series. But today we're going to take a look at some extra little lighting tips and tricks. We're not going to do any drills today, but I am starting with a semi finished painting today. Now, this is going to be part of something that is pretty big and it's coming up and my discord members already know about it but i'll share it on the community post in a few days anyway but it will all make sense then anyway today i want to walk you guys through four extra little tweaks and little changes you can make to really step up your lighting game feel free to follow along with a painting that you're working on at the moment or save this video for later for your next painting if you guys do enjoy this video and learn something today please remember Remember to like and comment it really helps me out so so much and make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell because next week's style study is gonna be a little interesting a little different but you're gonna love it I promise but without much further ado let's take a look at dramatic lighting part three Alrighty, so this is the painting I'm working on today. The complete painting from scratch will of course be on Patreon as always, but so far I have a harsh cool toned key light coming from the left of the screen and a warmer diffuse secondary light hitting our character from the right side. I discussed primary and secondary lights over the last two weeks on my channel, so if you haven't watched those videos I'll be sure to link them up in the cards, but for today these are the two big light sources I wanted to start with, so let's go ahead and level up. So the first trick requires us to mentally take a few steps backwards before we applied lighting to this painting. We're going to retroactively go in and limit the light source to look smaller, more localized and maybe even dappled. We're going to start by duplicating the painted layer and darkening the upper copy so that it loses a lot of detail and basically looks like if there were no key or secondary lights. I'm doing this by using the hue sap menu, but focusing on the lightness bar really bringing that lightness down. You'll probably remember this process from the drills we did last week where we then carved in the light source by using a layer mask. We're doing the same thing here, but instead of literally carving in every place the light would hit, we're carving in a directional patch of light. So here, since I want a lot of the focus to be on the bottom left of the screen, where we have the little mech crab, I'm creating kind of a stripe in the mask with an airbrush, and now it looks like the light source is quite limited. I don't even need to add a physical detail, it just looks like the light is filtering in through a crack or chasm of some sort. Next, I'm going to lower the brush radius and add some more spots of black in the mask to reveal little spots of light where the secondary light hits. And now it looks like the secondary light is dappled, almost filtering through from in between a bunch of objects. And just like that, we've taken it from a basic, super bright, almost studio light to a more dramatic, shadowy scene with interesting background storytelling elements. This one is a classic and I have to include it in a video about dramatic lighting because it doesn't get much more dramatic than a strong rim light. This is where you imagine a narrow but powerful light source that is behind the character and only hits the outer edges or the rim of a character's silhouette, giving it this really cool bright outline. There's a couple of different reasons you may want to throw in a strong rim light. 
First, it is a great way to emphasize the silhouette. Say for instance, you have two dark elements next to each other, like we have with the hair over here. The outer edges are in shadow, but they are also against a dark background, so it's rather difficult to see where the character ends and the background begins. So throwing a rim light in there is an excellent way to really find and solidify the edge and make the character really stand out against the background. Secondly, it helps you add movement. While we do have some flowy elements here, her pose still felt a little static, especially considering I want this scene to be near or in the ocean. So I'm actually gonna use the rim light here to add a bunch of random stray hairs that step out of the silhouette, and instantly we see a lot more movement and character in her hair. And the final reason I highly suggest playing around with rim light is because it just really looks cool. Like with superhero comics where they are walking away from an explosion, you know how that solid rim light really adds a lot of drama? I love that effect and you can probably tell I use it far too often, but listen, sometimes you just gotta let the intrusive thoughts win, okay? Okay, my third tip today is to include some glowing elements. Now, if you're doing some kind of mech or sci-fi piece, it can be fun to add a bunch of LEDs into the design and make them the glowy element. And I did that with the little crab guy here. However, if you're like me and paint more fantasy realism type scenes, adding glowy elements are an amazing way to instantly make the scene magical, almost fairy tale like I personally love to add a glow specifically to natural elements, like with the flowers here, because to me that is true magic, is when it is not entirely man-made. As you can see, I did go through a lot of trial and error, especially trying to find the right blending mode to make the glow visible without making it too opaque. It was tricky because the modes that looked fantastic on the character herself, they just didn't show up on the background. In the end, I think I settled for addition and then toned it down a little using a layer mask. And I don't know about you, but I freaking love how the glowy elements look in this painting. If you feel like the glow is too harsh or localized, you can always do what I did here with the red glow in the crab's eyes and apply a blur to it. That will help the glow to be more dispersed and abstract. Now, this was the point where I decided to redo the background because it was just way too high contrast and detailed, but with no story. I knew I wanted a siren-like character because, um, Okay, my friend got me into Love, Death and Robots and I legitimately watched all three seasons in two sittings while doing my nails. Of course, Jabaro was my absolute favorite episode in terms of visuals and I've been obsessed with the idea of a siren since, which is ironic because that's kind of what sirens do, so well played, I guess. And of course, there's robots in the show, so I thought her little crab buddy could be a little bot. And that's why the characters are the way they are, yeah? But with some more painting progress under our belt, let's take a look at my final tip for today. Of course I had to include floating specs. How could I not include floating specs? They are my personal crutch when it comes to finishing a painting. Basically, if there is one type of custom brush you want to download and preserve in your permanent collection, it has to be a scatter brush. I have several of these that serve many purposes, but the ones I most use are the brushes that create random specks of color. Oh man, this is such an essential to my finishing painting process because first of all this is the same idea as adding the stray strands of hair with the rim light having floating specks of light is an excellent way to create a bunch of movement almost as if it is dust in the air that is randomly catching the light the dust would only move like that if there was a wind or in this case a current of water that was causing it to move around right so instantly we're gonna see some dynamism in terms of storytelling. Another great reason to add floating specs is because it adds loads of tiny shapes. 
If you struggle with balancing out big, medium and small shapes like I do sometimes, you know the pain of not remembering to include the tiny shapes for some texture contrast. Make floating specs a part of your permanent workflow and that really won't be as big a problem anymore. Plus, I'm not showing you this here today because it wouldn't make sense underwater, but if you then apply orangey red inner and outer glow to the speck layer, you can also easily mimic the look of embers that fly out of a fire. You can see why it wouldn't make sense in this painting, we are not in Bikini Bottom sadly, but that is another fun way to use floating specs. Also, here's a bonus tip, and this may seem like common sense, but it took me years to actually be consciously aware of, so I want you to learn from my mistakes. Make sure that your background elements follow the same lighting setup as your main character does. So I made sure that her tentacles in the back followed a light and shadow pattern that would look natural with the setup my character is in. You don't have to have the exact same light and shadow placement for every Everything, but rather consider how each light source, if fixed in one spot, would hit all of the elements in the same scene. Again, I know this seems like common sense, but hey, I messed up early days, so hopefully this helps you out. But anyway, after a bunch of painting, here's the final piece, Friends. So there we go, we have officially leveled up our lighting skill. Like I said you guys, this hasn't been the most popular series on my channel, but for those of you who have watched it, I do hope it's been enjoyable and super helpful because I know it has for me. Um, but if it has, then please remember to like and maybe comment below letting me know which of these four extra lighting tweaks you most enjoyed adding to your painting, because I'm really curious to know. I know mine is definitely the floating specs, but um, um, let me know what you guys think. Next week we're gonna do a self study that is not the usual kind. It's gonna be super interesting but trust me we're gonna have loads of fun with it. It's a little different but you're gonna enjoy it I promise. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and have hit that notification bell down below so you know when it drops next week. Come say hi on Instagram and like I said there is a big secret coming. Well it's not gonna be a secret for much longer but if you want first dibs on what What's going on then make sure you join my discord server i'll leave all of the links in the description below but with all of that said thank you so so much for hanging out with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have check out some more videos up here and i'll see you guys on the next one bye <laughs>